If you want to be the best photographer you possibly can be, it's really important to start thinking about things a little bit more holistically. You wouldn't expect an athlete to only practice their skills, they do strength and conditioning. And similarly, you should not expect a photographer to only care about acquiring knowledge. There is so much more to photography. So today I'm gonna to explore one of the things I've thought about quite a bit, and that is how I move. I'm gonna talk about how I navigate crowds as an event photographer to protect my gear and more easily navigate. I'm gonna talk about how I hold my equipment so I don't injure my back. I'm gonna talk about just how I generally move as a photographer, so let's give it a go. So I'm gonna do the boring stuff first. The first thing is having a good posture when you're holding your camera. And I'm not focusing on how to hold the camera today. I've already made that video. I'm gonna talk about how I move. So I often do um, a stance in which I have my feet pointing forward and I have my, other, my rear foot kind of at a 45 degree angle. When I'm in this position, I'm going to be very stable. A lot of people talk about having steady hands for photography, which is a little bit silly in a way. Like if you have shaky hands, yeah, you might have a problem, but your hands are a very small part of your body. What's really keeping you steady is having a good foundation in your legs and core. And when I'm in this position, I have a good foundation, but additionally, I'm able to move laterally, forward, backward, and I'm able to rotate very easily. When I'm moving forward, I just do a quick step. It's not different, it's not anything different than what I do when I'm in jujitsu and I'm sparring with someone. It's very similar. As I step forward, my back foot follows. And the other thing is I'm staying on my toes. I'm never flat footed. If I'm flat, maybe if I know I'm gonna stay in one position, but typically if I know I'm gonna be moving around, I want to be on my toes. Another one I'll do if I know I need to do a big rotation, I'll simply rotate my back foot and I don't have to move from my position. I want to be as effective as possible, as minimal as possible. I want to use as little energy and just be as efficient as possible. Next, we can talk about how I rest. This is a big one. It might not seem like a big deal if you're only gonna be shooting for an hour or two, but if you're gonna be shooting for 10 hours, 13 hours, it really gets important how you hold your camera. You guys can probably see right now, it might be hard to tell, but the way I'm holding my camera is actually taking very little energy. So my first tip would be a hook method. With a camera with a chunky enough grip and a heavy enough lens, you can just create a hook with your hand and allow your camera to just fall by your side. In jujitsu, we do something similar where we don't make grips on things, we make hooks with our fingers, and now we're not relying on muscle strength. I'll just allow the camera to stay at my side and I'm good to go. Whenever I need to pull it up, I can shoot. Another one I do, if I'm using a heavier lens, this is only a 200 millimeter prime, but let's say I have a 70 to 200 or larger, and I'm not gonna be shooting because I find this to be a less responsive position, I'll actually kind of rest it in the crook of my elbow. Let's talk about how I navigate crowds. Now, navigating crowds is kind of an art form in itself. Um, it's very hard to do when it's really packed and you need to be able to get through a heavy crowd. Think like trying to get to the front of the stage at a show. It's an art. Um, and additionally, I need to consider not only how I move my body and place my body, but I also need to consider where I place my camera for a variety of reasons. One, I need to protect the camera. And two, I need to be able to quickly grab a shot if I need to grab a shot. So how can I do that? One way to navigate the crowd would be to rest your camera in your crook of your elbow and you can kind of just sidestep through it like that. I look ridiculous demonstrating this and I know, but sidestep through. What are the pros and cons? Pro, you're protecting the camera. Con, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get it up to shoot, I find. Another way is you can keep it down by your side However, I don't know if I really trust it there. I like to keep it close to me. Um, I could probably protect it pretty well, but I don't know if someone will spill a drink on it. Um, and it can be very hard to get it to my eye. You gotta think very fluidly, like I'm navigating, but I also need to be able to shoot. My preferred method for navigating crowds, which I find to be the most effective, however, it will be the most tiring, if you don't have strong shoulders, and that will be to raise the camera above the crowd. This is actually what I do the most. And now I can sidestep through crowds, and it's very easy for me to bring the camera to my eye 
to grab a shot if I see a shot. Okay, next we can talk about some position, a position I really like, and well, a couple of positions from the ground when you need to get a low angle. So the first one would be a knee to the ground like that. Again, there are some pros and cons to it. You can get a pretty stable shot. However, rotating becomes awkward because you have a very narrow base when you're shooting this way. So rotating, I'm now less stable. One position I really like would be a squat. Now, not everyone can do a full squat and everyone probably should be able to, but you know, it's 2021 and we've kind of lost our roots. But going into a full squat, I find I'm very comfortable minus my bulging discs, but I have a very stable platform and I actually find I'm more stable because I have a wider base so that if I need to rotate, I'm able to do that quite effectively. So let's talk about what to do with your camera strap. The one I'm most often doing if I'm shooting actively is I will actually loop it around my wrist quite a few times and then hold it that way, keeps it out of the way. I don't really, really like it tugging on my shoulder, that kind of thing. Now, if I'm not shooting, I have a couple of options. The first one would be over the shoulder, very common one. However, it's not a big deal right now and I do take the pressure off by holding it with my thumb but over a long day, if I do this for too long, my shoulder will start to hurt. Uh, and it's not even really the shoulder, it's more my back being pulled out of alignment. And yeah, I could have a second camera to balance it out, but now I have two cameras that become even more cumbersome. My favorite for getting rest, meaning I'm not gonna be able to shoot though, as well, would be actually a cross, like a seat belt and then on my back. I'll do that, and now I have no weight, no pressure. However, if I need to get a shot, I now have to swing it around, bring my shoulder elbow through, and now grab my shot. It's not the most convenient for actually shooting. So, you guys take your pick. I think as primates, we tend to get very focused on our hands and our arms. In jujitsu, I see it all the time where people get so focused that they're neglecting their core, their legs, which actually have much larger muscles. When you use your whole body, you become a much more effective machine in a way. And as photographers, we don't really have access to our hands when we're doing some shooting. The camera is taking that up. And so if I need to get higher up, I have to rely wholly on my legs. I need to become nimble. I need to be able to move around very quickly without necessarily looking even, right? And <laughs> that's not me trying to show off. <laughs> I actually do that when I'm working. I will climb on things without my hands. You have to be able to get up really high really quickly, grab a shot and jump back down. So here's my manifesto, if you will. If you've been watching my channel, you know I think about photography in more ways than just like technical knowledge. It's really, really important. If you wanna be the best photographer you possibly can be, to take a more holistic approach to photography. Consider what you eat, how you move, what your mental state is going into a job. Do you set intentions, etc.? Do you have a creative mind? Are you open to new ideas, etc.? All of this will contribute to your ultimate result as a photographer, and you don't want to be limited. If you're only thinking about it in one dimension, you're going to be very limited. And we should all strive not to be the best, meaning better than everyone else, but the best we can possibly be. All right, thank you for watching. Um, if you want to support my channel, please check out my Patreon page. I have even a $5 level, and with that level, you can actually email me once a month, and I will help you with whatever you need. I will always give a thoughtful response. I hope people can attest to that. I really care about you guys and your journey. That's why I started this channel. That's why I don't talk about gear, and I talk about stuff I believe will help people. All right, thank you for watching.